Don't get me wrong, I use a range of different supplements before and sometimes during and even after my workouts. But in today's video, what I wanna do is actually share with you which supplements to avoid after a workout. And this is critical information for anyone who's taking a range of different supplements, which I'm sure a lot of my audience is actually using various supplements because let's face it, these supplements are very powerful. They can dramatically improve your health or potentially affect your health in a negative way. So let's get into today's video, which is post-workout supplements. Now, post-workout supplements are products designed to help your body recover after you exercise. When you work out, your body uses up energy and nutrients, and it can also cause some stress to your muscles. Taking these supplements can help replenish what you've lost and repair muscle damage, making your recovery faster and more effective. Post-workout nutrition primarily focuses on replenishing depleted energy stores, repairing damaged muscle tissues, and reducing inflammation. This involves the intake of key macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, alongside essential micronutrients and hydration. So number one is protein supplementation. Protein is crucial for the repair and growth of muscle tissue. It aids in reversing the catabolic state induced by exercise to an anabolic state where muscle repair and growth occur. Fast digesting proteins like whey are beneficial immediately post-workout as they quickly increase amino acid levels in the bloodstream, enhancing muscle protein synthesis. Consuming a protein-rich snack or supplement within two hours after exercising maximizes recovery benefits. And next up, we have carbohydrate supplementation. Carbohydrates are essential post-workout to replenish glycogen stores depleted during exercise. This is crucial for endurance athletes and those involved in high-intensity training. The type of carbohydrates consumed matters. High glycemic index carbohydrates can more rapidly restore glycogen and are typically recommended immediately post-exercise. Moving on, we have hydration and electrolytes. Adequate fluid intake post-exercise is crucial for restoring hydration status and maintaining normal muscle function. Electrolytes like sodium and potassium help retain fluid and restore cellular function. Supplements or sports drinks that contain these electrolytes can be beneficial post-workout. And then next up, we have micronutrients and other supplements. Certain micronutrients such as vitamin C and E and minerals like magnesium and zinc can aid in recovery by reducing oxidative stress and inflammation. These fats are known to help reduce muscle soreness and inflammation, supporting quicker recovery. Guys, listen up. I'm sure you're aware of the importance of personalization when it comes to optimizing your health. That is why I'm offering a free 15-minute Boost Your Biology Strategy session with a senior member of my team where we'll chart out a personalized plan for success so that you stop guessing when it comes to different supplements, diets, training and lifestyle strategies. So be sure to check that link out in the video description down below. So first of all, we need to be avoiding vitamin C after strength training and also vitamin E. And so let's get into the details of this particular study. The study's titled Vitamin C and E Supplementation Alters Protein Signaling After a Strength Training Session, but Not Muscle Growth During 10 Weeks of Training. This study examined the impact of vitamin C and E supplementation on the body's response to strength training. Over 10 weeks, 32 strength trained men and women took either these supplements or a placebo while participating in a rigorous training regimen. The key findings showed that while muscle mass did not change significantly with supplementation, there was a notable interference in strength gains, particularly in the biceps curl exercise. This is attributed to the supplements dulling the body's cellular response to exercise, particularly affecting key muscle building pathways like the MAPKs and P70S6K, essential for muscle hypertrophy. Vitamin C and E seem to blunt the beneficial oxidative stress that occurs with intense exercise, which is crucial for muscle adaptation and growth. These antioxidants diminish the phosphorylation of certain proteins that are vital for muscle growth and repair following exercise. Although the supplementation reduced protein breakdown after training indicated by lower ubiquitination levels, it may also decrease muscle repair and growth efficacy. Ultimately, the study suggests that high doses of vitamin C and E might impair the muscle's ability to strengthen and grow in response to resistance training. 
This can be particularly relevant to athletes and individuals who use these supplements with the goal of enhancing their physical performance and recovery. And that includes avoiding ascorbic acid. The study was titled, Ascorbic Acid Supplementation Does Not Attenuate Post-Exercise Muscle Soreness Following Muscle Damaging Exercise But May Delay the Recovery Process. This study explored how ascorbic acid supplementation affects oxidative stress and muscle recovery after downhill running, known for causing delayed onset muscle soreness, DOMS. Participants were divided into two groups. One received one gram of ascorbic acid both before and for 14 days after the exercise, while the other received a placebo. Results showed that both groups experienced DOMS and impaired muscle function following the exercise. However, those who took ascorbic acid had higher plasma ascorbate levels and a noticeable delay in muscle recovery. The study found that while ascorbic acid reduced the production of reactive oxygen species, ROS, after running, it did not alleviate soreness. Moreover, the supplementation might have actually hindered the muscle recovery process. This study suggests that despite reducing oxidative stress, ascorbic acid supplementation after strenuous exercise could delay muscle recovery and does not decrease muscle soreness. Now, here's a word of caution for carbohydrates in post-workout nutrition. While carbohydrates are vital for replenishing glycogen stores after a workout, it's important to consider the type and quantity of carbs you consume. Recent research shows that combining carbohydrates with protein post-workout may not enhance muscle protein synthesis more than protein alone. So this study here was titled, Carbohydrate Does Not Augment Exercise-Induced Protein Accretion Versus Protein Alone. This study investigated whether combining carbohydrates with protein would enhance muscle protein synthesis and decrease muscle protein breakdown both at rest and following resistance exercise. Nine men averaging 23 years old participated in knee extension exercises across two trials. In one trial, participants consumed 25 grams of whey protein alone, and in the other, they consumed the same amount of protein with an additional 50 grams of maltodextrin. The findings showed significant increases in glucose and insulin levels in the PRO plus carb trial compared to protein alone. Despite these increases, adding carbohydrates to protein did not further stimulate MPS or reduce MPB compared to consuming protein alone, whether at rest or post-exercise. Additionally, the activation of certain cellular pathways was higher with PRO plus carb, but this did not translate into better muscle protein synthesis or breakdown outcomes. The conclusion drawn from this research is that insulin elevated by carbohydrate intake does not additionally enhance the muscle protein synthesis already maximized by a sufficient protein intake alone. Thus, the addition of carbohydrates did not further stimulate MPS or significantly inhibit muscle protein breakdown compared to protein alone. This suggests that for the specific goal of muscle repair and growth, additional carbohydrates may not provide extra benefits and should be tailored according to individual energy needs and overall dietary goals. Now let's take a deeper dive into the impact of carbohydrate supplementation on hormonal response after resistance exercise. Carbohydrate supplementation after resistance exercise boosts glucose and insulin levels. It may lead to a decrease in testosterone levels during the recovery period, though the exact reasons for this effect remain unclear. So this study is titled Hormonal Response to Carbohydrate Supplementation at Rest and After Resistance Exercise. This study explored the effects of carbohydrate supplementation on hormonal responses at rest and following resistance exercise. Nine recreationally trained men participated in four different conditions, resting with a placebo, resting with CHO supplementation, resistance exercise with a placebo, and resistance exercise with CHO supplementation. After exercising, participants either consumed a placebo or a CHO drink, 24% CHO at 1.5 G per kilogram body weight. Blood samples were collected before exercise pre- immediately after post and at 15, 15p, 30, 30p, and 60, 60p minutes post-drink ingestion to measure cortisol, glucose, insulin, and total testosterone, TTST, levels. Results showed that glucose and insulin levels significantly increased after consuming CHO, both at rest and post-exercise. 
However, cortisol levels remained unchanged across all conditions. Testosterone levels increased significantly from pre to post during both exercise conditions, EPL and ECHO, with levels during the ECHO condition dropping significantly by the 60p mark compared to pre-levels. Nonetheless, there were no significant differences in testosterone levels between the exercise conditions at any specific time points after consuming the drinks. The findings indicate that while CHO supplementation after resistance exercise boosts glucose and insulin levels, it may lead to a decrease in testosterone levels during the recovery period, though the exact reasons for this effect remain unclear. So in summary, the studies reviewed collectively highlight the complexities of nutritional supplementation in relation to exercise. Whilst vitamin C and vitamin E were shown to potentially hinder strength gains by interfering with muscle building pathways, carbohydrate supplementation did not enhance muscle protein synthesis beyond what protein alone could achieve. Moreover, carbohydrate intake post-exercise was found to affect hormonal responses, such as decreasing testosterone levels during recovery. Now, these findings highlight the importance of considering individual dietary needs and goals when choosing post-workout supplements. So in reality, I personally still consume carbohydrates post-workout, and I obviously consume protein and probably a small amount of fats as well. So even though we see a temporary like decrease in testosterone levels when we add extra carbohydrates to that post-workout uh, window, I personally don't think that this is long-lasting and it's more of a short-term effect. So I personally try to get in proteins and carbohydrates immediately post-workout because it actually enhances my following workout the next day. So that pretty much wraps up today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, please like the video, hit subscribe to stay up to date with the latest and greatest health research.